And when I say amazing, I really mean it. Okay, our first speaker is Dr. Ida Hasni. She graduated with a Doctor of Philosophy in Rehabilitation Engineering, University of Malaya, a Master of Health Sciences in Physiotherapy, University of Brinton, UK, and a Bachelor of Physiotherapy and Diploma in Physiotherapy from UITM. Formerly, she worked as a physiotherapist at University of Malaya Medical Center from 2002 until 2005, and she joined UITM till now as a researcher and lecturer at the Center of Physiotherapy Studies. Her research interests include pediatric rehabilitation, posture and movement rehab, and also she has been active as National para Ashari Classifier since 2010, and she is the para Ashari International Classifier with World Ashari since 2018. Okay, uh, have you ever wondered, is pain in disabled children is real? Well, for me, pain is frequent experience for children with disabled, yet its presentation can be confusing even by experienced caregivers. It's highly subjective, you know, and therefore today we want to know more about this. We welcome Dr. Ida Hasni to present and share his knowledge and experience regarding this topic. So welcome Dr. Ida. Let's start. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Azliana. Hi, everyone. Greetings. Good afternoon. Um, I hope everyone is well. Uh, give, please give me some time. So I will try to share my slide. Okay. Can you see my screen? How is the sounds and systems? Can you hear me loud and clear? Can we see some, uh, some emotions there? You can use your emotions. Yes. Yes. Thank yes, you very much. Yes. Okay, now, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Again, greeting to everybody, uh, everyone. Greetings. Uh, thank you to Dr. Azliana for short and sweet introductions. As mentioned by our moderator, my area of expert or uh, my area of interest basically is uh, pediatrics, but I'm not an expert. So what I have today is just a sharing sessions with you, which I hope uh, we can make our which can make our practice better. Okay. So from what we know, um, children uh, encounter everyday pain associated with minor bumps and bruises, and they can tolerate pain resulting from uh, serious injuries, disease, and other health conditions requiring medical care or procedures. But compared to adults, um, children have greater potential for neurological, cognitive, emotional, and behavior plasticity. Therefore, there are possibility that children may have greater capacity for resilience and motivations to recover from pain. And with early intervention, it is believed that um, children will less likely to get locked into a downward spiral of catastrophic avoidance behavior, demoralizations, and depressions. With appropriate intervention, they can be taught um, a helpful cognitive and behavioral uh, coping skill to avoid long-term functional disability. However, these things um, pain in infant and children with uh, with disabilities, and also with adults uh, with disabilities, mainly those uh, who have cognitive dysfunction. Pain is often the um, underestimated or undertreated. Uh, this was suggested to be due to um, varieties of um, factors. Oh, I skipped the slide. Not yet. <laughs> okay. This could be due to a variety of factors um, like um, erroneous belief about that um, children doesn't feel pain. So basically, some of us believe that um, the neurobiology of pain in children uh, is not mature or does not functioning yet, or they have functions differently. Second uh, is due to fear of pharma pharmacological management. Okay. Uh, like uh, children can get addicted to drugs or medications. And finally, it could be due to um, deficit in knowledge and skill by healthcare providers. So due to this misconception, it caused um, many children with disabilities uh, to suffer from untreated pain. So by this fact, um, that is why I choose to share this topic today. 
So by sharing this topic, I hope uh, at the end of these sessions, we can firstly describe or define pain according to the International Associations for the Study of Pain, or IASP. Understand the pain perceptions in infants, neonates, and children. Identify the causes of pain on children with disabilities. Have some ideas on the effect of pain on children with disabilities. And understand the principle of pain assessment for children with disabilities. So this is where I jumped just now. This is the definitions of pain according to IASP. So by right, by facts, uh, by textbook, these are the definitions where pain is considered to be a human primate instinct, which can be defined as distressing sensations as well as an emotional experience that is linked to actual or potential tissue damage, which the sole purpose of notifying the body's defense mechanism to react towards a stimulus in order to avoid further tissue damage. So by textbook, that is the definition. You need to have the keyword there is the uh, distressing sensations, emotional experience linked to actual or potential tissue damage. Okay. But IESP accompany these definitions with six notes. This is to enhance the understandings on the pain definitions. The first statement is that pain is always a personal experience that is influenced to varying degrees by biological, psychological, and social factors, indicating that how a person perceives about pain can be influenced by biological, psychological, and social factors. Secondly, um, pain and nociceptions are different phenomena. So why, by right, we need to understand is that Pain cannot be inferred solely from activity in the sensory neuron. This is because um, pain signal can also arise from nociceptions. So what is nociception? I think again, uh, I have to answer that. Okay, nociceptions can be defined as a physiological signals that alert the nerve system to nauseous or tissue damaging stimulus. And it is different from pain because pain is a sensory perception of Nociceptive stimulus. Nociceptive is a uh, nociceptive stimulus, uh, meaning that pain information is sent peripherally by nociceptors. Nociceptors is the pain signaling nerve ending. And thirdly, how individuals perceive about pain is also being influenced by their life experience because the experience help them to learn the concept of pain. This basically explains how we become tolerant to a certain level of pain. And due to experience, we learn to control our pain. Next, ISP highlighted that uh, as a person, report of an experience as pain should be respected. Meaning that we as therapists, we need to attend and try our best not to be judgmental when our client is reporting their pain. As mentioned earlier, a person may learn the concept of pain through life, life experience. Yet, although pain usually serves as an adaptive role, it may have adverse effects on functions, socials, and psychological well-being. Meaning no matter how great or how adaptable a person towards a pain, it will have consequences towards their function, socials, and psychological well-being. And finally, a verbal description is only one of the several behaviors to express pain. Inability to communicate does not negate or disprove the possibility that a human or non-human animal experience pain. Now, what is the reason why IASP associate this note with these pain definitions? By right, if any of us remember the old definitions of pain was published in 1979. And on that definition, IASP highlighted that when we talk about pain or reporting pain, it needs to base or it need to rely on the person's ability to describe experience to qualify as pain. And these all definitions by right, it does not accept um, the report by a person who cannot uh, communicate like infants, elderly who have uh, cognitive problems, and uh, 
or basically those who are unable to report their pain. So to make it inconclusive or to make it um, covering for everybody, pain definitions was revised. And this is the uh, definitions of pain so that it covers for those who also unable to uh, report their pain. OK, so meaning that even though a person cannot verbally report, we still can rely on other um, parameter in order to determine whether our patient is in pain. So before we explore about pain perception in children with disability, I will first share some information with you about pain perception in children, because the biggest question here is that does children create the same perceptions as adults? OK, according to the evidence, um, children does not perceive the pain, perceive pain as the same as adults. Why? OK. So basically, this is due to both children and adults have different emotional experience. And these different emotional and psychological factors can affect child's pain comprehensions and their response towards pain. Besides the fact that there are possibility that some chemical difference in the neuroanatomy and the neurophysiology of the children, which make their central nervous system act differently and behave differently compared to adults. Why? I will tell you in the next slide. Therefore, there could be a reason why children have different pain perception as being interpreted by their brains. So basically, we go back to the anatomy. I have no intention to bring back the memories of a uh, neuroanatomy class here because this is just going to be basic um, information so that we can understand why children perceive a uh, different pathway or different um, perceptions of pain. So basically, the anatomical and physiological several peripheral and central nervous system structures involved in the nociception developed during the second and third trimester of gestations for the neonates. And the nociceptive pathway are still developing as young as at when they are at 26 weeks of gestation. And by right, the cortical pain perceptions is available by 26 weeks of gestation. So what happened basically? They can feel pain, but due to uh, they still have a myelinization process going on. So it resulting a lesser speed of nociceptive transmission compared to adults. So it's not that they don't feel pain, they feel pain, but the speed of transmission of the information is a bit lesser compared to adults. So that is all about the anatomy now. Next slide. Okay. What makes the pain mechanism in infant or new neonates slightly different from adults? Again, this is just going to be a very, very brief information. There is nothing like uh, teaching uh, anatomy or physiology classes. The pain pathway in a child has its own features, as mentioned earlier, and it leads to different sensations and perception of pains compared to adults. The misconception and misunderstanding which is, exists until now is that our youngest patients do not feel pain or that it is not as strong as in adults. However, when we are, what we are not aware is that, as mentioned earlier, the nociceptive system start functioning as early as at least 26 or 20, 20th weeks of gestation. And this table here, it provides the comparison between pain pathway of premature newborn and adults. The pain pathway change uh, during growth and development. Both premature uh, newborns and adults, if you can see on the first row, they have fully developed nociceptive, um, nociceptive uh, structures. Okay, on this first row. But however, at the junction between nociceptive neuron and the one in the spinal cord, they don't develop the same functions. For example, in the terminal of the first neuron in adults pathway, the terminal of the first neuron in the pain pathway, they form they form a for, they form a junctions, they form a functions. Okay, so there is a function in the synapse. Uh, they make a synapse with the neurons in the spinal cord. This is in adults. But whereas in children or in preterm, their nociceptive neurons do not 
um, form any specific structure in the spinal cord, meaning that some of the axons are still um, being overlaid by other axons in the lamina 2 of the dorsal horn in the spinal cord. So it is believed that due to overlaying of the axons or redundance of um, unmalinizations uh, process, it cause interruptions to the differentiation between tactile and nociceptive stimulus. Okay, so if you can see, let's go back to the table. If you can see here, for premature newborn, there is no differentiation of the tactile and nociceptive stimulants uh, in the brain cortex, whereas there is a mature uh, differentiation between nociceptive and tactile stimulus in the uh, brain cortex of adults. So, by this fight, we can strongly highlight that children do feel pain, but they have different perception, different psychological, physiological, and physical response. Now, why it is important for us to manage pain in children with disabilities? Anyone? Okay. I will go later. I will definitely ask the participant later. Okay, so why it is important for us to manage pain in children with disability? Firstly, what we need to understand is that because unrelief pain in infant or children may permanently change their nervous system and can prime, meaning it can lock them or can lead um, them to for having chronic pain. Okay, and having chronic pain is another negative consequences which can lead to um, low quality of life later. Okay, and secondly, because children tend to develop discomfort behavior, uh, behavior signs uh, with repeated uh, painful procedures, which can negatively affecting their body and uh, participation. So we want to avoid this. So who is the disabled children? So according to the conventions on the rights of the child and conventions on the right of person with disability, children with disability is those who have long-term physical, mental, intellectual, or sensory impairment, which in interactions with various barriers may limit their full and effective participations in society on an equal basis with others. So these are the general definitions on who are the disabled children. As a physiotherapist, we deal with children who has long-term physical sensory impairment like cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, spinal bifida, traumatic brain injury cases, and many more. But sometimes these children, they have mental and intellectual impairment, which can be a barrier towards our uh, management. So not only that, since pain is a subjective uh, experience, it may express in atypical or unfamiliar ways. For instance, um, children with Down syndrome and cerebral palsy may experience different types of pain and produce different kinds of behavior to express their pain. In certain scenario, we can have Down syndrome child who can um, express their pain. They can recognize their presentation of pain locations, pain effect, but they might have difficulty in terms of reporting the intensity. I'm sure some of us have come across this scenario. Okay, so they have difficulty in terms of explaining the intensity and why they cannot participate due to pain because it's very difficult for them to express. I've come across a case of Down syndrome where she is around 13 to 14 years old, reporting right hip uh, pain to her parents, but Due to um, her cheeky behavior, okay, and her special behavior, the parent thought that she is only giving excuses um, to avoid exercise, okay? So after being persuaded a few times to follow up again with the relevant clinic of, at that time, I think, pediatric orthopedic. So they went for the examinations and what they found was um, this girl has developing a, a vascular necrosis over her right femoral head. So these are the reason why she is avoiding a weight bearing uh, issues to walk uh, uh, as she required to perform some exercise. So this shows that pain may not be easily recognized and may go on 
are treated. Okay, uh, someone is uh, ada notification sekejap eh. Okay, we are back. So, this show that spin may not be easily recognized and may go untreated in these uh, special populations. So, therefore, as we deal with these populations, we need to be aware that children, uh, disabled children, mainly those who are unable to communicate or have cognitive impairment, will not express their pain through communications, but mainly through challenging behavior or atypical behavior. Okay, what are the common sources of pain among children with disabled? So most of the children, most of the time uh, when we deal with children with disabled, we come across those who has musculoskeletal impairment. Few research findings reported that musculoskeletal impairment is one of the common causes of pain in children with disabilities like cerebral palsy. And this pain incidence has a profound effect on the child's physical activity, particip participation level, and quality of life. So due to musculoskeletal impairment, children with disability like cerebral palsy may develop severe bone mal alignment, which may alter their flexibility and positions of their soft tissues. Being compressed, okay? Shorten or elongate due to um, bones or joint mal malalignment, those structures commonly uh, become the sources of pain to these children. Okay, uh, I keep having the annotation request. Just bear with me. And according to the to a few studies, um, in several policy children, the most common area for pain is reported on the hip area, and the second most is the uh, feet area. So if you can see on the figures on the left hand side, to me is on my right hand side, or is it on our right hand side? Is the musculoskeletal anomaly that commonly develop in children with uh, Down syndrome? Okay, and these uh, anomalies can become uh, sources of pain in disabled children. And some of the musculoskeletal problems can lead to chronic pain incident in these populations. Uh, for, for instance, um, like these uh, systematic review, and meta analysis, they reported reported that the CP populations can lead can have uh, chronic pain syndromes, which can interfere with their functional abilities. Therefore, it is important for us to treat pain in these population populations. In fact, um, few studies also agree that some functional activities like dressing, bathing, transfer can cause pain to the children with disability, mainly like cerebral palsy. Furthermore, due to um, faulty posture and limited mobility, some of the children with disabilities tend to develop, to develop pressure sore. And even in some situations, the faulty posture may cause um, continuous, continuous distortions to the internal organ, which can cause continuous pain. Next, beside pain due to musculoskeletal impairment, children with disability who has neurologic conditions is said to suffer pain from uh, dystonia, spasticity, focal muscle spasm, contractures, digestive problems like uh, gastroesophageal reflux, constipation, and dysmotility. Apart from that, um, evidence suggested besides concentrating on the identified uh, pain sources, like what we have here, for us and the clinician in charge should not also overlook on other common causes of pain that can be encountered in typically developed children. So there are possibility that um, children with disabilities also can suffer from a normal stomach ache or ear pain. Okay. 
these are some of the evidence where which I can share with you, which indicating that the medical procedures like investigation, surgery, definitely, and physiotherapy physiotherapy for some children, even the habitual creativity such as dressing are the major sources of pain in children with disabilities. So these are the continuities just now. A recent studies shows that, okay, um, physiotherapy can induce pain in children and young adults with cerebral palsy. The evidence suggested that lack of knowledge on special children's pain experience during um, therapy sessions is the main reason why pain in disabled children are untreated. There are some of the findings related to um, CP child response towards physiotherapy routine. Okay, where I will share with you. Okay, the first child said. It is not nice to feel pain, but without physio, we won't do anything. If you stay like that, you will just get worse. Meaning that some of them do understand that they need us in order to prevent complications. Next, um, the second child. He said that sometimes pain stays after the sessions. I know that at the end, at the moment, my legs hurt because the physio must have pulled too much. And so I have pain after the sessions. Okay. So there are possibility that children who are unable to respond or reporting their pain producing atypical behavior to indicate that they are in pain after attending our sessions. A few more statements that I think it is good for me to share so that we can make our practice better. Okay. And this child, there, there was a child. They found that stretching induced pain, but their range of motion did not improve. And next, the therapy, um, according to this child, the therapy was not great, so I didn't talk too much and it was harder. Meaning that there are possibility uh, indirectly we tend to do more if the child does not respond. Okay, or if we have not getting a positive feedback from the patients. And sometimes a sense of betrayal was sometimes apparent. A few children felt that the therapist took advantage when they are relaxed to pull harder. And few felt that if they complain, the therapist make them work even harder. Okay. So I'm sure that um, this scenario does not only happen in this research, okay? Uh, so that is why to me, very important for us to gain the trust uh, between parents and also the child, regardless whether they can communicate or, or not. So that's about this slide and some of the information. So moving on to the next slide. Okay, once they are exposed to pain, children with disability will commonly show atypical behavior and some of them will have sleeping problems. According to the evidence, these are some of the common difficult behavior displayed by the children. Okay. They tend to show um, frequent twitching or jerking of legs, often changing positions, kicks the cover of the bed. And most of the child who have pain will sleep less than nine hours. And they awake in the morning with feeling of tired. Some parents report that their child grinds their teeth during sleeping and they even snore. Okay. Some refuse to go to bed and some shows a feeling of anxious at night. Okay, parents also report that their children sometimes has difficulty of breathing at, at night. Now, apart from atypical behavior or difficult behavior and sleeping difficulty, research finding shows that due to pain, children with disability, mainly those who are unable to communicate, have severe cognitive impairment, may show remarkable reductions in terms of their physical functions, participation level, mobility, they tend to be increased in dependency where parents reporting uh, difficulty in terms of uh, performing transfer, dressing, okay? 
And there is also research so showing that um, these children tends to develop, tends to have poor quality of life. Okay, if you see here, I have a red star, which indicating that it is time for me to ask questions before continuing with the next slide. Okay, but don't worry, it will be an easy question where I believe everyone can answer. Okay. Now, I will stop my presentation first. Don't worry, it will be a simple question. So, we will minimize this one. So can you show, uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Dr. Azlena, can we see, can you see my screen? Okay. And now. Yeah. Thank Maybe you. Not Chris now. <laughs> I'm sure you have paid attention to my um, slide. No, this is not just this is this is just for fun okay now uh, okay i will share the link at the chat box okay can you see the link you can click the link and then enter the code 107635 Whenever that you guys are ready, I can see the participants start coming in. It's great. Just give it a go. Oh. Try, 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 try. Quicker. I'll squeeze. 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 i Answer honestly, eh? <laughs> How are we doing? Everyone finished? No chat, no chat. Wait. <laughs> Come on, just be afraid. And here, she can see that. I'm still waiting. Okay, mine was done. Eighty percent, Dr. Ida. Yay! Everyone, how's yours? Congratulations. Tama sa tama nung tama. Ida, rasio yung rasio ito. <laughs> okay, how are we, are we doing? Most of us are uh, doing the Uh, 
Then we have the winner, FHA, Luna and Rasia. Congratulations. Yay. Okay, let's back to the topic again. Eh, it doesn't want to come out. Okay, I need to close this one. Okay, let's go back to business. One, two, three. Uh, Menang claim uh, Unfortunately, there is no ya. price to, to claim. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, uh, okay, where do we stop just now? Uh, okay, slideshow. Okay. Okay, that is about the pain consequences, yeah? Okay, now is about the pain evaluations. When we talk about uh, pain evaluations, um, me myself are uh, not really expert in using it, but at least for us as therapists, we need to know what are the uh, what are the standard clinical recommendations being um, recommend uh, for us to be used in clinical practice. Okay, there have been a number of observational assessment tools um, which have been developed where caregiver observe and read the presence of uh, pain indicators such as vocalizations, facial expressions, uh, motor behavior. So based on these observational tools, those disabled children who are unable to report their pain show some um, increase in pain behavior following a nauseous uh, events compared to baseline, which is often greater than the control group. So such evidence suggesting that um, children who are unable to express or report their pain are sensitive to pain as their cognitively intact peers and even maybe more sensitive. Eh? As mentioned earlier, some of these uh, children may have inability to report their pain, which create a major barrier for educate pain assessment and leave the child vulnerable to under-recognized or under or over treatment of pain. There has been many pain assessment tools. Um, in 2019, the American Society for Pain Management Nursing uh, published a clinical recommendations. Okay, uh, I have the article here, uh, ASPN 2019 position statement. And according to these um, recommendations uh, for pain assessment in young children, and mainly those who are unable to self-report, to self-report their pain, uh, including, firstly, is to be aware of the potential causes of the pain, attempt self-report, observe patient's behavior, solid proxies report of pain and attempt energetic trial. Okay. So what does it mean by um, being aware of the potential cause of pain? As I mentioned earlier uh, about the causes of pain, therapists or clinicians need to be aware on different types of causes or sources that can lead to pain in children with disability, which include infections, injuries, diagnostic tests, uh, medical procedures, and disease progressions. And furthermore, research indicate that um, the developmentally non-verbal children uh, often have a higher burden of pain from frequent medical or surgical procedures and illness, okay? So there are possibility that our children who are disabled, mainly those who are unable to communicate or express their pain, suffer um, pain, suffer pain higher compared to uh, other children or their peer. Next is about um, attempt self-report. Can we really use this um, self-report in children? So what we need to know is that the ability to express the presence of pain before two years of age um, is, is there, but sometimes it can still be unreliable. By three years old of age, most of children have a basic pain vocabulary where they can say words like ouch, oh, um, or refuse the limbs to be touched. For typically developed children as young as three years old may be able to quantify pain using validated tools. However, research shows that um, children at age of three to six years old commonly, um, the data is a bit biased because sometimes it is difficult for them to discriminate between the sensory experience of pain or stress. 
So the information reported by children from three to six years old might not be reliable. So based on the cognitive development for children who can do self-report, the American Society for Pain Management Nursing recommend that uh, to limit the number of potential response from six to three. Maybe like for instance, if we have um, 10 uh, phase scale, so maybe we can reduce it to five phase scale, okay? So by uh, four years old, most of the typical developed children can reliably uh, use the term uh, less and more. So there are possibility by reducing the scale, uh, we can um, help do them to express their pain and we can uh, do some assessment. But that mainly if uh, they are not, they have a good cognitive functions. And by eight years old, by right, most of the typical developed children are able to re uh, uh, reliable can reliably report the uh, their pain. Okay, so be, we need to consider a time self report uh, assessment uh, again uh, according to the suitable age. Observe patient's behavior. So if the attempt to report fail. So we need to go to the next steps, which is uh, to observe the child behavior and the most common primary behavior categories that can be used to help identify pain in children with disability is usually facial expression, body activity, motor movement, crying or verbalizations. But some author reported that only facial expressions is um, very weak because they found a weak association between the facial expressions and evidence of pain. This is based on brain-based evidence studies. So facial expressions of an infant experiencing acute pain, including uh, they will show some um, eye, eyebrows lower, drawn together to form vertical furrow, a bulge between the eyebrow, the crook, like that. Uh, between the nose and upper lips and the mouth is open and stretched in the shape of a uh, square. So these illustrations here um, is showing some of the facial image that are uh, being relayed to infant when they are in pain. <coughs> so, but however, these facial expressions um, could be different in children with severe neurological impairment or those with different disabilities. So apart from facial expression, children with disability may exhibit distress behavior such as irritability, such as irritability, agitations, too fast. Agility, uh, <coughs> irritability, agitations, and restless. So these are the descriptions which given by uh, research findings on the facial expressions of uh, pain in infant. Next recommendation is based on solid um, proxy reports. Okay. So caregiver has been used as one of the reliable sources to identify pain related to behavior among children with disabilities, mainly those who can who can report their pain. So far, majority of the research findings agree that a proxy report is a valid information to report a pain incidence of a child. This table is summarizing the recommend, uh, recommended procedures for pain assessment in different populations, including neonates, infant, toddler, young children, and patients with intellectual disabilities. Okay. And this table is summarizing the recommendations assessment tools for young children with intellectual uh, problems. Uh, this is for behavior pain assessment for infant, toddler, and young children. Whereas this one is um, tool assessment behavior pain assessment for infants. Uh, who have uh, children who has intellectual disability. So, before I close these sessions, I would like to introduce you to two behavior assessment tools, which maybe we can consider to incorporate in our practice wherever it is suitable. 
First is the non-communicating children's pain um, checklist, which has internal consistency of Cornbar Alpha 0.9. Okay, with moderate correlations where PS and R value is at 0 0.46. And this evaluation tool has been sensitive, has a sensitive value of 0 0.84 with specificity value of 0 0.77. And next is the pediatric pain profile. This tool is a 20 item behavior rating scale which is designed to assess pain in children with severe neurological disability. The available information suggested that the PPP is reliable and valid assessment tools and has a great clinical potential to be used in both clinical and research setting. And the reported internal consistency for this tool is ranging from 0 0.75 to Cromba Alpha of 0 0.89. We interrupt the reliability from 0 0.74 to 0 0.89. And the report analysis indicate that PPP has sensitive, sensitive, sensitivity value of 1 and specificity value of 0 0.91. So overall, for my conclusions, I would like to emphasize that due to lack of scientific attention given to pain in children with disability and due to long-standing belief that this population is insensitivity or indifference, it leads to perspective that children with disability, mainly those who are unable to express their pain, could have low pain thresholds. The problem with this view, which still exists until now, is that uh, studies were rarely designed and lack of proactive management to assess and treat pain in these populations. However, recently, um, due to emerging evidence suggesting that children with disability, mainly with cognitive impairment, and who are unable to communicate may, under certain circumstances, actually be more sensitive to painful stimulations. And they could have greater pain evolved potentials and prone to experience chronic pain compared to their typical developing peers. This is because not only based on the scientific existence of the pain pathway, but what we need to remember is that what is painful to an adult is painful to an infant and child unless it's proven otherwise. So there has been a need for up-to-date pain education curricula for physiotherapy program as urged by IASD. Uh, this is because as physiotherapists, we are becoming increasingly, increasingly expected to be able to integrate biopsychosocial approach into our treatment. And furthermore, I think um, I would urge this platform so that uh, we can have more training uh, which require uh, continuous professional development for our therapies to take part in um, pain physiotherapy management for children with disabilities. So I leave you guys with the hope that someday someone or us will be able to take step forwards to enhance our clinical practice in management of um, pain in children with disabilities. With that, thank you very much. I hand over the platform again to Dr. Azliana. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Idasni. Uh, what can I summarize here from your presentation? We know that uh, how interesting the pain, not what, not I mentioned what interesting itself. Uh, I mean that how uh, unique due to different emotional experience and psychological function that affect in the disabled children in terms of pain compression and stimulation that respond with their to their pain and also i believe that uh, those disabled children tend to have a difficulties in behavior that may result in their physical function psychological mobility uh, and overall quality of life. And thus, as Vizio, what we need to do is we need to gain trust. As you mentioned before, we need to gain trust between the Vizio and the parents and also for the for the sake of the children itself. All right. So when I look at the chat box, there's no question. All excellent. 
Uh, they yeah. congratulate to you. But then I have one question for you. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. As you mentioned before about the tools that we use to, uh, that's suitable use for pits, okay, in terms of pain, we have NCCPCR and also PPP. So what, is there any uh, objective measurable? As we know that this is a question A, right? So might become uh, biased in terms of, but they reported high reliability and validity and specificity. Okay, fine. But it's subjective, right? Any tools that uh, have an objective measurable for pain? Okay, at the moment, um, mm -hmm. for children with disability, main, because we are talking about those who are unable to report, uh, to perform self-report for their pain. So mm -hmm. currently, as accepted by, by IASP, these are the most uh, common reliable tool. Except mm -hmm. for those okay. who can report pain, uh, they have uh, some objective measurements, which almost the same as adults. Uh, I, I understand what do you mean? They involve um, numeric scale as well. So mm -hmm. it, it is more objective because as mentioned earlier, for those children who are above eight years old, they are more reliable in terms of reporting the intensity of pain and in mm -hmm. terms of uh, locating their pain. So we can use an objective tools for those who are able to do self-report. And yes, at mm. the moment that is, is this is self-reported in Malay version, Dr. Ida? Or? The moment, no. So this is why I would like to urge yes. everybody mm. or everyone in clinical practice. In fact, maybe we can work closely in order for us to further develop this area because I think this is one of the area that has been push away from us, which by right, we should also have, a, we should also have a role in it. Mm, all right. It's a great opportunity, everyone. So, uh, 